Today we have the Rode Podcaster in the studio. No, no. Not a studio. A hotel room, actually. I'm out of town right now, but I still wanted to do a review this week, so I brought along the Rode Podcaster with me because I figured this might be a microphone that people travel with to make podcasts. I mean, this room sound isn't as good as a studio. It doesn't have treatment or anything like that, but it's actually not bad. Not all recording situations can be perfect, and since this is a dynamic microphone, it'll cut out a little bit more room noise than like a condenser would. I think this is going to be a good example. I've actually been really, really wanting to try this microphone out, really excited about it, just because I've heard so many things about it. And I feel like there are a lot of people that just despise this microphone, but then when you actually go on like Amazon, it doesn't have terrible reviews, so I feel like it's kind of interesting, and I've really been just needing to find out for myself if I like it or not. So let's not waste any more time, let's just go ahead and get right into this review. The Rode Podcaster. Finally, we meet. But I've actually had a lot of my subscribers just hate on this microphone just ruthlessly. The leader of that pack would be Z Alves. He has commented on a lot of videos just being like, hey, this microphone sucks in this video, but it's still better than the Rode Podcaster. <laughs> I needed to find out, like, how bad this is. Maybe he got a bad one if he tried it out. I don't know. I mean, I do know. I do have it in my headphones right now, but I'm not going to give it away yet. I got to keep it a mystery for at least another six minutes. It's going to be difficult. It can be difficult. Right now, I'm recording the Rode Podcaster into my MacBook Pro with the gain set at about 62%. Before the $227.99, you will get a microphone mount, the RM2 ring mount system. You will get a microphone stand adapter, a USB cable that is 3 meters in length or 10 feet if you're American, and you will also get the Rode microphone. Another thing that you will get in the box is, of course, some documentation. Oh, I'm on the third floor. I probably shouldn't drop stuff. Sorry. And I hate saying this in every single Rode microphone review, but I just want people to know and not get screwed over. But the microphones do come with a 10-year warranty, unless, of course, you buy them from Amazon. And one more thing that this does come with is a fantastic little sticker. You can only have so many I Heart Rode microphone stickers and no offense, Rode, but this is corny. Like, all I need is just it to say Rode with the cool little X'd out thing like Under Oath. If you don't know that band, shame on you. But actually, what I do with these stickers is I cut right here. <laughs> Take off the I heart because I just think it's so cheesy. Then I can put it on a hard case, guitar case, whatever I want. And then it just says Rode microphones instead of this, so... But when it comes to the build quality of this microphone and everything that comes with it, I think that the microphone is built well, the grill's really nice, the cable that's with it, very strong. You can tell it's going to last a very long time. The mic mounting system is actually one of my favorites when it comes to microphones like this. When it comes to the features and everything that is on the microphone itself, it does have a little green indicator light that just is essentially saying, hey, my power requirement is being met. On the bottom of the microphone is where you can plug in the USB cable. And on the other side of the microphone, you will have your volume and your headphone jack. And right here is actually just headphone volume. It does not affect the input volume whatsoever so it does not make the signal hotter or less hot that is going out to the computer it is literally just turning your headphones up or down so overall i do think the build quality of this is fine even though it is almost 230 dollars one thing that really does kind of bug me is that it didn't come with a road leather carrying case I think that that would have been a really nice feature to have for this microphone, considering that podcasters aren't always in the same studio. A lot of them do travel. So I think that it would have been a nice feature to have the leather carrying case with this microphone. I really do think that's a reasonable request given the price. Well, enough about all this basic shit. Let's go ahead and nerd out, get super specific with the specs. The Rode Podcaster is a dynamic USB microphone with a cardioid polar pattern. This has a frequency range of 40 hertz to 14 kilohertz, a sensitivity of negative 51 decibels, 
a max SPL of 115 decibels, and it has a signal to noise ratio of greater than 78 decibels. Some other features of this microphone is a 28 millimeter dynamic capsule, an 18 bit resolution with 8 kilohertz to 48 kilohertz sampling. This is Windows and Mac compatible. It claims to have a tight cardioid pattern for superior off axis sound rejection, an internal capsule shock mounting, and a full 10 year warranty. When it comes to the frequency response graph of this microphone, you can tell that throughout a majority of it, it is very flat. And then it does have a boost in the high end, where it eventually reaches about an 8 decibel boost around 8 kilohertz. But one thing to remember about this frequency response is that it is going from 40 hertz to 14 kilohertz. So that high end boost isn't actually reaching as high of frequencies as some other microphones. Well, now that we've gone through the basics of this microphone and we went through the specs, let's go ahead and test this microphone out. I will occasionally use a pop filter during these tests. I just want you to be able to hear what this microphone can sound like with and without a pop filter. If you get right on top of the Rode Podcaster, here's how it's going to sound. And if you put a thin piece of fabric between you and it, here's how it sounds. Peter Piper picked a patch of pickled peanutses. 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 When you talk into the front of the Rode Podcaster, here is how it sounds. When you talk into the side of the Rode Podcaster, here is how it sounds. And when you talk into the back of the mic, here is how it sounds. When you're typing on a computer super hard behind the Rode Podcaster, here is how it rejects the sound. If you want to use this for podcasting like the name entails or any other spoken word application where you want to put some post processing on it then here is how it could sound with some EQ some compression usually I'll use a little bit of a noise remover to lower that level of gain once you add the compression and then usually just a de-esser if I do add EQ I will put it up on the screen for you to see what I did and if you want to get this microphone for YouTube videos and podcasting, and during your videos you don't want it on screen, then here is how the microphone could sound about three feet away. One other test that I want to do on this microphone real quick is have the gain at zero and slowly turn it up to 100 just to show you the kind of volume it can get and also to show you the noise floor that it has. So I'm just going to jump down to zero right now. Then I'm going to slowly turn it up and let you listen to the noise floor of the Rode Podcaster. Twenty five percent. Fifty percent. Seventy five percent. One hundred percent. And even right now at a hundred percent. I'm not clipping. I mean, I do have to talk a little bit quieter, but you can tell that it doesn't have a whole lot of gain to play with, but also once you get past about that 65 to 70 mark, it starts really getting noisy in the noise floor area. Noise floor area? What? Whatever. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. All right, let's jump back to the rest of the video now. Well, now that we've gone through the basics, the specs, and the testing, I'm going to go ahead and give you my review of the Rode Podcaster. Like I was saying earlier, I was really curious to see if this microphone was as bad as some subscribers were making it sound. When I went on Amazon, there were decent reviews. It was a 3.9 out of 5 stars. So I went into this thinking like, hey, this is a microphone that basically has an interface built into it. So I understand that the price is a little bit higher. So if you think like Behringer has some interfaces that are 40 50 $60, and then some standard ones like the Scarlet Solo or whatever, around $100. So on average, maybe $80 for like a beginner interface, right? So if you have $80 worth of interface in here, then that means you have roughly $140 microphone sound in here. Let's, let's play it safe. Let's say you have a $100 sounding microphone in here. There is no way this sounds like a $100 microphone. I would say that there are some really low budget microphones that I've heard out there that are better than this. I think a big selling point of this microphone, and I think it's the thing that kind of tricks people's mind, 
is that it came from Rode, which I think is a great company. I really do like Rode. And also, it's the look of it. It looks professional. It looks like, hey, I have a podcasting mic in front of me. And so I feel like it kind of tricks people's ears a little bit into being like, this is a good microphone because, like, look at it. It has to be. And it was kind of expensive. I just don't think it is a flattering microphone. It just doesn't have a nice clarity. It doesn't have a nice bass response. The one thing I will say is that it does do a pretty good job on plosives, but (sighs) it's just disappointing. All said and done, I just think that this microphone just fell short. I think that the sound is not good. There were really good features about it. There were good things about it. But if the sound isn't good, what's the point of having it? I would much rather have a microphone that sounds fantastic and is built like shit than have a microphone that sounds like shit that's built fantastic. I feel like they put a dress on a turd here. That's how I feel. They dressed up a turd. Some of you may be like, hey, he's being a little harsh on this. I don't think it's that bad. But here's the thing, though. It's almost $230. A hundred dollars more than the Blue Yeti. I'm not even a big fan of the Blue Yeti, and I would absolutely prefer the Blue Yeti over this microphone. I would personally pass on this microphone. I think that Z Alves was right. I do not think this microphone is good. I think that it it, it's a little rough. It's a lot of rough. It's it's bad. It's bad. So the grade that I give the Rode Podcaster is a D. Honestly, I kind of want to fail this microphone and then destroy it. But the build quality is so good on it that I don't think I'm strong enough to break it. (laughs) So personally, I do not recommend this microphone. I think it is overpriced, and I don't think it sounds good. Thank you for watching this review of the Rode Podcaster. I hope it helped you out. Help you decide whether you want this microphone or not. You do not want this microphone. But most of all, I hope you had fun while you watched this. Stay tuned for a lot more videos, a lot more reviews, and a lot more other just fun stuff that we're going to be doing here on the Audio Hotline. Thank you to all my subscribers and all the people that comment. I really do appreciate you, and thank you for watching the Audio Hotline. I'll see you, audio nerds, next time. Hopefully with a better microphone.